Hello, my brothers and sisters, my fathers and mothers, and the young people of our beloved nation, Ghana. By the grace and mercies of the Almighty God, 2023 has ended. We've entered 2024. We praise and thank our Maker for protecting and preserving us. We all have stories of personal trials and triumphs to tell. Triumphs fueled by our dogged resilience, our individual stories are inseparable because we are one people. We are proud Ghanaians. The ultimate measure of leadership is not wanton appropriation, but inclusivity. It is not abusive dominance over any group or persons, but collaboration. It is not about control over state institutions, but empowerment of the people. Indeed, the ultimate measure of leadership is not personal and familial gain, but selfless service to all, regardless of their background or political affiliation. This, sadly, is what we, the people of Ghana, have lacked over the last few years. We've all lived painfully through the challenges the failed Akufuado Baumia administration has inflicted on us through their reckless mismanagement of the economy, poor governance, barefaced corruption, and profligate expenditure at the expense of socioeconomic and infrastructural development. 2023 has been nothing but a continuation of the years of hardship, the high cost of living, and worsening poverty for the Ghanaian people. The 2024 budget provides no hope for an improvement in our circumstances. A raft of new tax measures have been slapped on us to raise an additional 11 billion Ghana cities from the already overburdened taxpayers. In that same budget, while they sought to squeeze the last blood from Ghanaians through increased taxes, they have increased the money allocated to the office of the president from 1.4 billion Ghana cities to over 2 billion Ghana cities. A clear case of asking the people to tighten their belts while the president loosens his. Bamiya's economic mismanagement, corruption, and Akufuado's poor governance and leadership have led to a significant decline in living standards for the ordinary Ghanaian. The soaring prices of essential goods, high level of unemployment, and the struggles of small businesses are a testament to the government's failure to address the people's needs. Many of you have felt the impact of these challenges in your daily lives, whether it is struggling to put food on the table, finding a job to support your family, or witnessing the erosion of our national pride due to corruption and mismanagement. My brothers and sisters, I feel your pain, your despair. The MPP has brought economic calamity on us. This is not just a matter of Mahama saying so. We all now know that drastic action is needed to reset our nation on the right path. That process must start in earnest with the 2024 presidential and parliamentary elections. We have a crucial election in December, and I'm happy to present myself as the man with the experience Ghana needs today to take us out of the doldrums that we have been plunged into. We require nothing short of a team of experienced Ghanaians committed to righting the wrongs of the last seven years and working together with the citizenry to build the Ghana we want, a prosperous Ghana with many opportunities to benefit everyone without discrimination. As we start the journey in this new year, I'm here to offer hope to you all. I'm committed to repairing the damage done to our economy and creating a brighter future for all Ghanaians. We must all work together to bring about the change that Ghana so desperately needs. Let us stand united in our quest for a better future for ourselves and generations to come. This is because the heartbreaking tales of a significant population of our people giving up on Ghana due to this rudderless leadership are too many to recount and can be too costly to carry. But we are assured that no matter how long darkness reigns and darkens our hearts, our minds, our pockets, our businesses and investments, the sun will rise and shine even brighter. As a result, we can look forward to the new year 2024 with renewed hope and optimism. 
My brothers and sisters, I want to speak directly to you through this broadcast to share my vision for the future and outline some of my key interventions and initiatives. Initiatives that will help repair the damage to our economy, create well-paying jobs to fight the high 14% unemployment rate, and meet our youth's aspirations. These initiatives would also revamp businesses and productivity by implementing a 24-hour economy and building an agricultural economy driven by technology and digitalization. One of my key priorities will be to address the high level of unemployment and meet the aspirations of our youth. My team and I, under the auspices of the National Democratic Congress, have developed a comprehensive plan which will be shared with businesses, academia, civil society, and the youth to create jobs and provide opportunities for all our young people will empower youth to contribute meaningfully to their well-being, families, the Ghanaian economy and society through targeted investments in education and skills development. While providing jobs for the youth, we'll also encourage business ownership and entrepreneurship amongst them. In April 2025, the new NDC government shall introduce a new budget to support and build small businesses and adjust taxes as an incentive for job creation. At the heart of my vision for economic revitalization is the implementation of a 24-hour economy. This innovative policy seeks to maximize productivity and efficiency by extending business hours and operations around the clock. Doing so will create a more dynamic and vibrant economy that benefits workers and businesses. A 24-hour economy will increase economic output and create well-paying jobs. It will also contribute to a more inclusive and accessible society, giving people the flexibility to work, to study, to shop, and enjoy leisure activities at any time that suit them best. The 24-hour economy will succeed because we shall provide improved security and public safety, which will require massive recruitment into the security services and private security operations. My government will provide cheaper and more reliable electricity for those participating businesses based on a time of use tariff system. Companies that sign up for the 24 hour economy will benefit from modern smart meters calibrated to charge a lesser tariff per kilowatt hour for power that is consumed during off peak hours. Businesses that subscribe to the 24 hour economic policy will receive further tax incentives to reduce the cost of their operations and enhance their competitiveness. Financing support will be provided to strategic agro-processing factories and manufacturing companies through the Ghana Exim Bank to boost production for import substitution and for exports. As president, I shall set up and personally chair an Accelerated Export Development Council to boost Ghana's export drive, especially under the ECOWAS Trade Liberalization Scheme and the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreements. As the Trade Union Congress opined, the 24-hour economic policy is a game changer. Evidence suggests that running 24-hour economies has propelled many great nations, such as the United Kingdom, the United States of America, and South Korea. Indeed, South Korea is living proof that with the right leadership, a country can transform from underdeveloped to highly developed. It happened because in 1960, the leaders of that country took the strategic decision to turn it into an export-led economy, more precisely into an economy that grows by exporting manufactured goods. To do so, they transformed the economy into a 24-hour one. This initial boost in productivity and the determination to find more export markets, turn that country into a highly advanced one. Their GDP per capita grew from $158 to $6,600. Introducing the Mahama 24-hour economy is the right thing to do for Ghana, especially considering the state of our country today. It will boost our manufacturing industry and transform our country into an export-led economy providing the world with goods made in Ghana. Introducing the 24-hour economy will significantly increase the number of well-paying jobs available to our young people. This is extremely important because the young people are the ones who will build tomorrow's Ghana. 
Transforming Ghana into a 24-hour economy will increase the productivity of our industry, services, and agribusiness. And last, but by no means the least, a 24-hour economy will offer Ghanaians increased access to public services, and all of us will benefit from this. I'm also committed to revamping our agricultural sector. The sector remains a cornerstone of our economy, and we must invest in modernizing this sector in order to maximize productivity and sustainability. By introducing well-established cooperatives, advanced farming techniques, embracing digital tools and promoting agribusiness, we shall create new opportunities for farmers, improve food security and bolster economic growth. I am determined to lead this transformation for the benefit of our nation and as a farmer myself. We'll also establish and deploy farmer service centers nationwide in all districts to make essential farming, equipment, accessories, and technology available to small, medium, and large farmers to boost production and output and make farming truly trendy, cool, and attractive to younger people, younger Ghanaians especially. Ladies and gentlemen, in addition to these interventions, I am also passionate about the fight against corruption and uprooting poor governance to ensure that our resources are used responsibly and ethically. I firmly believe a transparent and accountable government is essential for building trust and confidence in our institutions. We will hold to account members of this administration who have abused the public trust by misconducting themselves in office. But more importantly, we would also allow unfettered space for the anti-corruption agencies to deal with anybody who abuses the public trust under my administration. By strengthening anti-corruption measures, promoting good governance, and upholding the rule of law, we shall create a fairer and more equitable society where everyone can thrive. We will reduce the size of government in our bid to cut down on expenditure. We will combine ministries and remove government agencies that are duplicating each other. In other words, we in government will also tighten our belts, even as we call on our people to make whatever sacrifices are necessary for our national revival. As we look forward to the year ahead, I want to assure you, the people of Ghana, that I'm fully committed on behalf of Ghana's most development-oriented political party, the NDC, to deliver on these promises I've made. Ladies and gentlemen, democracies cannot thrive without quality and trusted leadership. Economics cannot grow in the absence of quality and trusted leadership. Willing nations can only become great if they have quality and trusted leadership. When things are tough, true and trusted leaders set up a vision that inspires people and gives them hope. And this hope provides us with the strength we need to move forward. When hope is gone, the people who destroyed your hope must also go. They will go on December 7th. 2024. Without hope, danger lurks everywhere you turn. And this is why the fundamental duty of any true leader is to instill hope where there is none or to revive it when it is gone. A true leader must cause positive change by example and action. I promise to lead the change and I invite you to be part of the change. When times are tough, a true leader's fundamental duty is to develop a vision that inspires and brings people together. That is another reason I am offering myself and the NDC to you this year. By working together, we shall overcome our challenges and build a more prosperous and inclusive nation. I call on all of you to join me in this endeavor. Lend your support and actively engage with our outlined vision. This call to national duty is bigger than any individual interest. Change is coming. I'm confident that together we will change the direction of this country this year on December 7th, 2024 and build a brighter future for Ghana, a future we all can be proud of. Let me assure you that your votes will count because we shall protect and secure them. Fellow Ghanaians, I thank you for your resilience, your strength and your perseverance. Despite the difficulties we have faced, I am inspired by the undying spirit of our nation. In this new year, let us move forward with hope and determination, knowing that a better future 
is within our reach. Together we shall build the Ghana we want, a prosperous and just Ghana filled with opportunities for all. Together we shall build a Ghana that we all can be proud of. I'm ready to lead this charge and I trust you will join me on this journey towards a brighter tomorrow. I thank you and may God continue to bless our great nation Ghana. I wish you all a very happy new year. Thank you. The victory of Muhammad.